adult children. And there's been a pattern of relationship that hasn't been as good as you want it to be. It can feel like it's kind of written in stone and maybe you don't feel very hopeful about being able to change that or maybe you've kind of given the main relationship over to your spouse with that particular young adult child. And it doesn't feel good, but maybe you're used to it or kind of resigned to it. And But there's something about it that, of course, doesn't feel right to you. And today's video is on that topic and it's to give you some ways and some hope about ways that you can, you still can find a really wonderful way to relate to that adult child, young adult child. And the good part, the great part of that, the extra great part about that is then you're affecting the future generations too. So their children and their children's children. So that's wonderful. I'm Wendy Yellen. This is the Art of Transformation. And thank you if you've already liked and subscribed. And if you haven't, please do that. It really helps us. And I appreciate it very much, very much. So let's talk about some examples. One person I'm thinking about, one of my clients, Bill, he had a young adult daughter that um, it was just kind of ships passing in the night. And she was at least mildly annoying to him. Um, couldn't really connect with her. And if she had a good relationship with her mom, so at least she had one parent kind of feeling. And it just didn't seem to have any, to go anywhere or have any, any possibilities. So, but that's not true anymore. They're connected, they're loving, they're having fun together, they're having new adventures together. Uh, and he's really enjoying it. So what, what was needed to have that happen? Well, number one, and most important, is that that's what he wanted. Even though he'd kind of given up, and even though it seemed like pie in the sky impossible at this point, because after all, she's an adult, a young adult, he, he wanted it. It didn't feel right to him. And so we were able to work on it, and he's thrilled with the results. So number one is desire. Like, is it something you're willing to put some time into, even if a big part of you feels hopeless about it or has resigned yourself to it? Yes, it's definitely possible. And we didn't do any sessions together with him and her. This I, We just worked together with I just worked with him. My experience, even though I was trained also as a family therapist uh, and a systems therapist, my experience is that uh, if one person is really willing to make some deep, deep, real changes, that it can often make a gigantic difference in the family to everyone. I see it all the time. I see it all the time with couples. I see it all the time with parents and their adult, young adult children, all the time. I, I see it, I'm thinking of a client now with a teenage son. So And yes, he's not working with me, she is made a big difference in their connection. So it's definitely possible, even if the other person doesn't seem willing. 
Now, there's no drugs or alcohol involved in any of these situations that I'm thinking about, which would make it much, 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 much harder. If even possible, I'm not sure. Okay. Now, with Bill, I'm calling him Bill, one of the things that was very clear was that when he was growing up, women in the family were absolutely second-class citizens in uh, um, very obvious ways. And he had a sister who nobody knew how to handle. And so she was kind of foisted off on the mother, definitely a second-class citizen, not considered to be much of anything. Fa the father seemed not to give her much credit. And like I said, she was kind of foisted off on the mother and the men in the family and the boys in the family. It was like that was, they were the mainstays. The women and the girls were off to the side and not important. Not a pretty picture, right? But this is how he grew up. And it's not me saying this as a, uh, a woman who thinks about these things. This is what was showing up in his memories, but also in his eidetic images. It was just so clear. So is it any surprise that the girl in Bill's family, his daughter, would be, without him thinking about it, that she would be considered less than. Not as a purposeful thought, but as a way of treating her that was uh, knee-jerk or automatic. No, that's not surprising at all. He didn't even really know it because she, has pro she had problems of her own and she was more connected to her mother anyway. So here, Bill is giving her more to mom to deal with and not really washing his hands because that's real negative, but just kind of giving up. Because Bill didn't know he had a, he didn't feel, he didn't experience that he had a way to relate to her that was any different than his father related to his sister. This was his template. It, it was his unconscious template of how girls get treated in a family. And it was his unconscious template for how fathers treat their daughters. But the thing that's so wonderful about Bill is that he wasn't happy with this, which is, of course, why we were able to do something. This didn't work for him. Although, again, like I've already said, he didn't feel very um, positive about it. He was kind of resigned about it, but still wanted to see what we could do. Now, a lot of um, processes try to get you to understand that this is what you're doing. For me, understanding doesn't cut it. It's nice. It's nice to have an intellectual understanding of it. But for me, it's just the bare beginning and it doesn't hardly scratch the surface. I can understand a lot of things, but that doesn't mean I stop doing them. I know that eating those pistachios last night, late at night, was definitely not good for my body, but I did it anyway. Knowing isn't enough. 
there are many forces going on inside of us that are much stronger than the in, than our intellect their neural pathways in our mind from years of habits and observations and experiences that are much stronger than our thinking and what we're working with here when we work with an eidetic image is changing the neural pathways finding a pathway that's already there that's much more helpful to us, but which has been covered over and not used very much. That's what we're doing. So Bill's pathway about how to treat uh, his daughter and how uh, girls and women get treated, it was really strong. And he, it, it, they were like givens in his mind. And you, you, you have those. We all have those. So you know, you can, I'm sure you can name a couple right now of what you're doing. Those are the more obvious ones. As Bill was able to first really see the patterns, literally actually see the patterns, and for Bill, one of the things that was really important, and I think this is one of the huge contributions of eidetics, is when you're really looking at an image, you begin to have empathy, the deepest, truest, realest, most feelingful empathy for uh, the other person and for yourself. It's the most wonderful way of putting yourself in their shoes and putting yourself in your shoes. But sometimes it's really hard to have empathy for yourself. When Bill began to really see and feel what it was like to be his daughter in his family, what it was like to be his sister in his family, and even his mother in his family of origin, because as I said, it was the women that were being um, put one down. When he began to really see and feel it, that, that... It made it much, much, much harder for him to treat his daughter as a second-class citizen. And very importantly, once you begin to truly feel another person's experience at your hands, it's really hard to do it again. Or as you do it, you're so aware of what you're doing to yourself and the other person that it really takes your breath away and takes you aback and it's much easier to stop. So all those things began to happen all at once for him and he began to have alternate responses to her, alternate reactions to her, seeing her, more empathy for her. And that, of course, created a willingness or an opening where she began to come forward to him. And then as that starts to happen and they kind of gently reintroduce themselves to each other, so to speak, then it's a natural to start doing things together a little bit at a time, right? And then from doing things that they both enjoy actually having fun with each other. And then now they're, now they have that pathway that they're starting to go down. And you can see how the, the openings just naturally start to happen when you're not going from a knee-jerk pattern, but you're actually having connection and empathy and a heartfelt mm, connection to the adult child, the young adult child. So there really is the possibility to have a different relationship, even though you've been going down that same path for a long time. Let's talk about another, uh, another example. So I'm thinking about, uh, I'm thinking about a, a client who's, you know, it happened for her, but it happens for a lot of people. One child 
triggers you more than the other. I triggered my mom, for sure. <laughs> and in this client that I'm thinking of, one of her daughters really triggered her. Sometimes it has to do with you're both in a similar position in the family, like the oldest or uh, maybe you had trouble with your younger sibling and now you have that same trouble with your youngest child, adult child, or as one of my psychology psychologist friends said, um, he has more trouble with uh, relating to the young adult child who is the most like him, which is just so interesting to me because they are alike in all the most wonderful ways. And we're, if he is ever able to get over that, the fun the two of them will have is just kind of mind-boggling because because of the wonderful ways in which they're alike, which would be really fun for both of them. But instead, there's a triggering that's happening, and so uh, there's more distance than there than would be ideal, right? All right. So, what if you have a young adult child who is triggering you more than the others, then you're responding to them from old patterns that are where, where you're unable at, at this moment to see all of them. I've talked about this in some of the other videos where I talked about not being able to see my husband as who he really is, but more my expectations of him. So for the purpose of this video, for now, just give some thought to when's the last time you just saw them, took them in, not from the point of view of who you wish they were or from the point of view maybe of some shame, like one of my clients has some shame about uh, the way you treated them when they were young or how bad you felt early, maybe something happened to you when they were quite young and you weren't able to really be there and you were traumatized from something else and so that early connection was weaker or maybe not there and you don't feel good about that and you feel maybe some shame or guilt about that. Or again, maybe they're reminding you of one of your siblings or how you were treated so, again, it isn't enough just to understand this, but maybe it's a start for you, a, a, a jumping off point for being able to feel a little bit of hope. Hope is so important. A little bit of real hope that maybe, just maybe, you're not relating to this young adult child you're relating through some filters, through some lenses that don't totally fit them. They don't totally fit you either, and that's really important. You're distorting what you're able to take in because of your history. Can you imagine if you were can you imagine at all if you were able to relate to them as a human being in their own right? Can you feel anything in your heart as you even contemplate that? What if the guilt that you feel about them, for example, if that were less, if that were lessened, and you could be with them, and what could happen? Even if you just can imagine it for a moment, 
What I'm saying is that all of that is possible. All of that is possible. And not that far away from, not that far away. For example, though, the person I'm thinking of who, the woman I'm thinking of who was able to really, really shift her relationship with her teenage son, it moved massively in just a couple months after years of discord and trouble and her feeling really troubled about the way she was being. And it makes her feel so much better. I don't want to just be a cheerleader here. I'm, I want you to hear that these are real people who... We're not sure that they could, that things could ever change. And it didn't take all that much. One, because of their willingness, and two, willingness and desire, and two, because they did the work. So what could happen for you with your adult child or children? It's, it's possible. I think what would be probably the most helpful as a first step is to notice, well, first of all, if, you're, if you've listened this far along in the video, then you know you have some interest in this. You know you have some interest in having a different relationship, a better relationship with that adult child that you're thinking about. And if that's the case, then there's so far that you can go. So really take that in, that you're not, you're not totally accepting of the way things are, even though you may despair or feel discouraged that they can change. And take that spark of not acceptance, of really wanting that contact with that child, and you know they want it with you, Take that spark and let it take you somewhere. Don't ignore it. All right. I really hope that was helpful to you. And I thank you for listening and for taking it in and for hopefully making multiple generations even better because of it. And I'll see you on the next recording. Bye for now.